What is up, guys? How's it going? This is Kazi from Clever Programmer. Thank you so much for joining. We are live right now. I just got a brand new studio. I have a lot of things going on in my life that I would love to kind of give you an update on. And mainly my goal is just to kind of connect with every single person because I haven't done that in a while. And honestly, I miss doing that. So this stream is mainly to connect with you. And so if you're in the chat or you're around, definitely um, throw in some ideas or, you know, throw in some chats. And I think what I would love to do as well with this is brainstorm and come up with a couple of, you know, different ideas with you as well about what type of content you would love to see on this channel. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Sachin. How are you doing? Nice to have you on here. We have Harry Minnie in the house. Let's go. We got Magesh. Magesh, I see you on, on the Instagram. I see you on Instagram. So good to have you in here. Yo, what is up, Zaki? We got Zaki VT. It's been a while. It's been a while. What is up, ZZZ? Hello, what now? Hi, Gaming World. Hi, Cult Patil. Hey, JJ Trends. Hey, Ahmed Raza. Hey, Jakut. Hi, Lawrence. Yeah. Finally, a new video. Programmer Marine says. Let me actually pop that up if I can. <clears throat> show the setup <laughs> yeah so there's a lot going on with this new studio i mean let me know how you guys like it as well but you know it's still in the process right you can see the kind of tv in the back uh right there that tv is not uh hooked up yet so we have to set it up it's because i got a new apartment so i moved to a brand new place and setting it up, I wanted to make this studio look a lot better than all the previous studios I've had. So the lighting setup is pretty cool. I got two lights in the back. Um, I put some trees so it feels like I'm in, a, I'm in a jungle. It doesn't just feel like I'm in this barren land. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the whiteboard in the back, of course. Yo, what's up, guys? We got 140 people here. What's up, Aryan? J Communications, Joseph, Joe. Hey, Aryan, how are you doing? Hi, Maruf. Hi, J Communications. Yeah, um, it's hard for me to show the exact setup because my camera is right there, right? So let me actually figure something out and see if I can see if I can connect to my phone and show you guys from my phone. So we'll we'll take a we'll take a look real quick. Let's see if I can connect my phone as a source. Hey, does that work? Oh, that actually works. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So I can actually show you guys the setup now. Let me see if I can go this way. Oh, unfortunately, that does not work like I expected it to work. Okay, so let me do this. Let me stay here and let's see if I can add a... Give me one second. I apologize, guys. We're, we're doing this live. So my apologies, okay? Whoops. Let's see. Can I switch this camera to the phone? Perfect. Let's go. To, oh, that allowed us to go wide on it, too. Perfect. All right. That is a terrible view. I'll just show it like this. Let's take this off. I apologize. So this is the setup right now that I have. I got one light over here. I have another light over there. I got the camera, right? Uh, my second monitor where all the chats and kind of everything is coming in that I'm seeing. My stream deck is right here. Stream deck allows me to control the lights. So if I press this button, the lights go off. Press this button, the lights come on, right? All of these lights right there. I got the speaker set up. Um, and then what's cool about this monitor right here is it can tilt. So when I'm coding, I like to code on a like vertical monitor setup instead of like a um, instead of a sideways setup. You know, uh, how do you guys like to code? By the way, have you guys tried any vertical monitors? Because they're really, really, really cool. 
Like if you ever try a vertical monitor, it's really cool. By the way, it's Sachin's birthday. So happy birthday, Sachin. Happy birthday. Yeah, so vertical monitor, like I can code all along and I don't have to scroll as much. I can see the context of the entire like app in one go. So if my coding productivity improves a lot when I have a vertical monitor set up. It's planted there, as you can see. Um, clean setup. Yeah, it's not super clean yet. I'm working on making it clean. Uh, it's it's decent. It's decent. It's definitely a decent setup, but we've got to do a lot of improvement on it. So let's see if I can switch my camera back here. Perfect. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. We <coughs> we made it. We made it work. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's going on? Why don't you make videos on data science, Kafka, Hadoop? Yeah, that would actually be a fun idea. I am not very good at data science. So if I were to make videos, they would be kind of from scratch. And so it'd be like newbie videos. If you guys are cool with that, hey, I'm down. That would be fun. Um, do you guys, by the way, do you guys do clean setup? Yeah. You're the inspiration. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Your phone's wallpaper is mad, mad cute. Oh, you guys saw that? That's funny. Probably when I was locking it, huh? Uh, let's see. Man, the frame behind is awesome. You guys like that frame in the back? Yeah, it's pretty dope, right? She's wearing, um, that's my girlfriend. She's wearing boxing gloves because she's a pro boxer. And now she's a pro wrestler. That's pretty cool. And um, I'm the dude with the laptop. I just took on... So I'm going to also be kind of sharing life updates, right? Like like I said in the start, uh, just because I haven't seen you guys in a while and I would love to kind of connect with every single person here. You know, it's been, it's been a minute. I miss you guys, honestly. I've been doing too many recorded videos and I miss the thing about live streams. Hey, JJ Trends just said, hey, I got my first Fiverr order on JavaScript. It's a $500 project that I learned by JavaScript in your videos. Let's go, JJ. That is awesome, man. That is so cool. Let me pop that up on the screen. That is awesome. Let's give that a big highlight right there. Let's see if I can still play my There we go. That's the clapping. You guys, let me know if you guys heard the sound of the clapping. That'd be great. <coughs> awesome job, JJ. Real, real proud of you, man. That is really cool. Super happy to hear that. Um, <clears throat> Aaron is um, Aaron is out doing his stuff. He is you know, uh, yeah, he's like killing it in everything that he's doing in life. So Aaron is not here right now. Yeah, Magish, it's been, it's been a while, especially doing these lives, man. I miss this. Aryan says, I watch a lot of your videos. Thank you, Aryan. I appreciate it. Most definitely. What's up? Yo, front forum focus. What is up? Um, we definitely have a lot of React on the channel. Like every video has React. I can't remember the last video that didn't have React, except for this one. Right? This one is not going to have that much React. Dope Programmer says, hey, I got a chance to build social media because of you. Thank you. Thanks, Kazi. I appreciate you as well. Thank you. I'm happy that you're working on it. <coughs> I just completed your Amazon clone. It's so amazing. Hunter, you got it. Yeah, those React videos are a lot of fun, honestly. They're a lot of fun, but every video that we do, even if we're doing if even if we're doing these web three videos, they are very heavily focused on React. There's a lot of React in there. So we're definitely not by any means cutting out React or doing less of it. I think that we're doing even more of it because these projects are massive and then there's a ton of React work that's happening in there. Oh, some coding news. That actually would be fun. That, that's actually a great idea. Coding news, like kind of what's new. Do you guys know any good websites for that? Because um, there was something. 
there's this blog app that's like pretty good or I forget what it's called, but it like you go there and it shows you like a couple of trending blogs or what's going on in the developer world. By the way, I noticed your courses are very practical oriented. Have you considered covering some more of the academic stuff like data structures and algorithms? Yes. Yeah, so uh, that is actually a really good idea. We definitely have, uh, we're, we're definitely, that's something we're actually thinking about data structures and algorithms. Lance, who's new on our team. Well, he's not new anymore. He's been <laughs> working with us for over six months now, but Lance, he's one of our bootcamp instructors, and he is really good at data structures and algorithms. So we have been thinking about him teaching some data structures and algorithm stuff on this channel. That would be really, really cool. <coughs> Next JS with TypeScript. Yeah, we're definitely doing, uh, we've done some TypeScript, but yeah, we've, we're definitely doing a lot of Next.js. Thank you for your React videos. I recently got an internship as a React developer. Brilliant. That makes me so happy to hear. That is awesome. Really proud of you for that. Yo, David, what is up, broski? David is like, Kazi's flexing that, uh, Kazi's flexing that studio. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm flexing it, and I'm also sharing with everybody the studio and, uh, you know, just kind of showed them what I have in here. <coughs> Would you guys want to know how much the studio costs? Or does anybody want to take a guess how much the studio costs? Let's see. Can I do a poll? Uh, I can only add yes or no options. That's kind of boring. Yeah, take a guess. I don't actually know at the top of my head how much it costs, so I'll have to think about it. But yeah. Take a guess, and uh, I'll let you guys know if you guys are in the right direction or not. The person that gets guesses the closest, how about this? I'll PayPal you. I'll PayPal you uh, fifty dollars. Okay, how about that? We'll keep it simple. Oh, WebAssembly stuff, Zachy. Mm -mm, man, I'm staying away from that WebAssembly, bro. Aryan says $8,000. JJ Trent says $200,000. $60,000, $10,000. Hmm, interesting, $50,000. Man, you guys are uh, <coughs> you guys are guessing some massive numbers. You could be right or you could be wrong. I don't know. David, do you want to like calculate how much my studio is like roughly even if it's not exact and just text it to me don't post it in youtube chat but text it to me and uh, i'll take a look at it <coughs> 20k okay between one and two million dollars yeah that would be a really nice studio huh <laughs> one trillion dollars no audio. You guys should be able to hear my audio, right? I hope so. I hope so. My keyboard is a very simple keyboard. This My keyboard is just the Apple keyboard, regular one. It's very dirty, but it's the Apple keyboard. Right, regular keyboard. Um, I used to have a mechanical keyboard, but then I decided to not use a mechanical keyboard anymore because it has a Windows key most of the times, and it's kind of annoying because Apple, you don't have that key, and then there's Alt, and Apple doesn't have Alt. Apple has, like, Option and Control, and so then it doesn't really work. And then my F3 and my F4 buttons... And my brightness buttons, like, they don't really work as normally as you would expect. 7,200. Let's see. Um, I 
All right, David is uh, David is giving me kind of some guesses. Hey, I've already shown my board, buddy. Maybe you wanna. Thank you, Amanath. I appreciate that. Good work. Good work. Good work. Uh, if anybody wants to jump on the stream to do an interview or something, do let me know. That could be cool. We could we could definitely set that up. Tried any functional programming stuff. <laughs> yeah, functional programming is a lot of fun, but I haven't been trying anything functional programming recently, except I'm just doing a lot of functional programming in JavaScript. But yeah, I was doing closure and things of that nature. Audio is good, right? Can somebody give me... Yeah, yeah, people are saying good audio. But some people are saying no audio. But then some people are saying audio is Gucci. Hmm. That is confusing, man. Matek... Matek says it is, where's Matek? Matej, my bad. Matej says it's 9K, my studio setup, $9,000. And then I'll put on some guesses. All right, I'll, I'll put up some guesses at this point, and you guys pick. Honestly, guys, I apologize. I don't even know who's the closest one. Oh, wait. I know there's a few people who are pretty close, actually. Um, there's one person <laughs> that got it exact, like on the dot. <laughs> a few people that got it on the dot. So I apologize. I'll have to pick one person kind of randomly. Even if multiple people got it. But if you took multiple guesses and they were different, I don't think I'll, I'll count you. You have to pick one and stick with it. There's some people who are guessing everything and nah, that's not happening. That is not happening. You have to pick one guess and stick with it. <coughs> uh, David, can you write down the names of everybody who's like, either got it or is extremely close and just like write down those names not in the chat not in the chat not in youtube chat but like just text me on my phone that'd be great yo another thing i got i got a freaking green screen you guys want to see the green screen i've never used a green screen before ever ever because i always thought it was so much work to set up the damn thing and it would take forever oh by the way i'm also training for a marathon so that's crazy if any of you are runners you should add me on strava you should add me on strava app i'd love to see your runs and push you and selfishly you'll push me and then i'll keep running and then i'll do my marathon my marathon is happening october 9th i believe october 9th so it's in 15 weeks less than four months so pretty scary pretty scary all right so my boy is collecting names now david and he'll find whoever is the closest and then one person wins and i'll send you send you money through their paypal or crypto whatever is easiest for you well like we'll pick one person and you get 50 bucks okay <coughs> All right, guys, we're now going to stop taking more answers for the studio after this point, okay? So, Amanath, anything that's after the timestamp of 9.17 a.m. Pacific time, don't take that anymore. But the correct answer – let me put up a poll. Let's put up a poll. I'll add a few options, okay? I'll add a few options. Boom. Let's go here and we'll say 20,000. We'll say 100,000. We'll say 5,000. We'll say... <coughs> All right, so I'm going to put this poll, and uh, you guys can take a guess on this poll as well, all right? 
Let's see those answers coming in hot. Let's see what people are guessing. Some people are guessing 20K. Nice. <laughs> Soon we'll do the reveal of how much this entire studio setup costs. All right, we'll announce the winner soon or probably later in the stream, so stick around. Okay, gives you another reason to stick around. But uh, <coughs> there are some there are there are some people who guessed it very very accurate, and uh, we'll be picking you. We'll be picking you. Yeah. So that's what's going on. Um, let me let me go here. Oh, oh, yeah. Did you guys say you wanted to see the green screen? Yeah? No? I can't remember. Well, I don't care. I'm going to pop up the green screen because I never had it before. So let me give me one second here. There we go. And... I know it's not really doing anything right now, but it does something once I start moving it closer to me. Okay, so once I move the camera closer to me, that's when it does something. So take a look at this. Now I can be just chilling here, right? And I'm in the freaking screen, yo, like what? That is so cool. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely find this setup really, really cool. Being able to like kind of merge in. And then if we're coding, right? Like if, we're, if there's some kind of coding going on, it looks so much better coding like this. So like in my new tutorials, you know, I definitely want to have, um, I definitely want to have some action like this, right? Like, isn't this a lot better? Instead of, instead of like my screen, before my screen was like so stupid, it was, it would do this. It'd do this, right? And it takes up, like, look at that. That st stupid square is blocking so much of the code. And boom, now there's like very little code that's being blocked. Or I could even like put myself on the other side and flip, flip the camera or whatever, right? And then that gives... That gives like even more space and just chill here, right? And then boom, we're going through the code. And it's like, all right, guys, we're importing a bunch of stuff. And then we're creating sidebar. We have our sidebar option component. And then it does stuff. And let's check out our modal component. Oh, that's, mm, mm, big brains. <coughs> so, yeah. This just looks so much better. So much better. She says, your studio is lit. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. And as soon as I start dropping a green screen down, it's going to start showing the background behind me. Hey, look at my hand. Ooh. Oh, and, and one of the most awesome parts, now I can point. Somebody said this in my team meeting yesterday. I can point to stuff. So check it out. This is my favorite part. So like if I'm like trying to teach you something, right? For example, you know, what is this slicing business that's happening right over there? Let me let me uh let me mirror myself so I can like point accurately. Right? So it's like, hey, what is that slicing stuff that's actually happening over there? The slice of 39 or what are we doing here? Is slicing from 0 to 6. Well, what we're doing here is we're we're getting the first six strings of current account, right? And then we're getting the pretty much the last, like from 39 on. And I can I can literally move around like this and point to stuff. And I don't know, in my mind, I feel like that'll make understanding what's going on actually a lot easier for you, right? So then that way I can like literally show you like, this is the div that's doing the thing, right? 
this is the current user dot name that we need access to. So I kind of love that. And I can do that in my live streams. I could do that, you know, when I'm recording a video. Um, Part says, why are you not streaming a game? I mean, I think I would love to stream chess if you guys would want to watch because, like, I play chess competitively and I enjoy it a lot. Um, so that's definitely something cool. Yeah, Programmer Marine says that's a lot better. Yeah, we have a lot of people saying. Aaron says, yo, that's a lot better. Uh, Mattel says, yes, it looks amazing. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. That looks so much better. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> Aaron says, big thank you. Started Web3 and React starting from your videos. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this, this setup is definitely pretty cool. I mean, I could even, this is kind of cool. Like, I could do my videos like this to show off that I'm a, I'm a coder, right? Like, Everything I do just has, like, this is probably how people just imagine me. They just imagine that I just have, like, code in the background all the time. Just, like, oh, must code. Oh, oh. Just 24-7. <coughs> I mean, I kind of do, so. <laughs> I kind of do code a lot. All right, so uh, this is what's happening here. And then going back to where we were. Yeah, so add me on Strava, you guys. Add me on Strava. If anybody's using this app, add me here. I don't know what my username is. But I think if you type in Rafa Kazi, you'll probably find me. I'm not not exactly sure. All right. And uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a beginner runner, pretty beginner, very, very newbie. Have terrible times, at least for myself, like... 11 minute is fast for me. I'm like dying at a, oh, wait, you can't see anything. Whoops, sorry, let me get out of your way. So yeah, like at 11 minutes, I'm like kind of dying. Uh, not very good. So if I could use your help with that, that'd be great. My screen is moving at 20 frame rates per second. Is that true? Is my screen moving that slow? I hope not. I hope not. The green screen is reducing the blocking of the code. That's pretty good. Yeah, because that used to be one of the very common complaints, right? Every time somebody would be like, you're blocking the code. Oh. Just so much anger and hate. But we can avoid all that anger and hate by, by just simply using a green screen in the back. I'm, I'm surprised how good a green screen actually is. Like It's, it's kind of mind-blowing that it works as well as it does. Uh, Strava is just a running app right here, this right there, just a running app. And like you could use it to run and uh, track stuff. And like you could, you could add friends on here and send friend requests and stuff like that. So I don't know if anybody runs here at all, but if you do, feel free to add me on here. Let's go look at some coding news with this new setup. Hmm, that's a good point. Real programming is an elitist myth. <coughs> I kind of like this because even without re... Oh my God, is this one of those websites that begs you to pay them if you're even looking at it for one second? Seems like it, but stop bothering us now. So that's good. We'll zoom in here. <sighs> Look at this. I'm in the freaking screen. This is sick. Just my arm looks a little bit cut off, but who cares? Who cares, right? This is fine. It's not that bad. Um, okay, I have to do... Let's move it up a little bit so it doesn't cut my head off all the time. There we go. Now I have headspace. Perfect. Yeah, so I let me know what you guys think about this, right? Real, real programming is an elitist myth. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of agree with this because um, a lot of people will tell you, 
hey, pro- there's real programming. This is what a real programmer does. A real programmer uses Vim. I use Vim. <coughs> or a real programmer, a real programmer uses the command line. They don't use a GUI to push their code. They don't use a GUI to use Git and version control. They use the command line. Oh, you used uh, an extension from VS Code? You are a noob. You need to be using the command line more. Like that type of stuff, right, is just total bullshit because that's not true. Like you can code however you want. And there are plenty of incredible programmers who are still using Sublime Text. Sublime Text, those days are gone. You you should just use either VS Code or if you're going to use an online tool, then use an online tool like Replit or whatever. But like, don't use, don't use Sublime Text, guys. I mean, that's been, that's, it's over. If you use Sublime Text, you're not a real programmer. You're a fake programmer. But yeah, like most things, you guys are totally fine, right? Like most, whatever way that you code is your way of coding and it's okay. Like it's totally fine. You don't have to freak out about it. Um, nobody's going to come after you if you're using, I mean, you know, some there's like some developers I know that were using like Notepad and text edit and like weird stuff to code and they're phenomenal developers. So it's whatever your flow is, you're going to be fine. And everybody codes in different ways. For example, I was never really good at data structures and algorithms, yet I could build a ton of stuff. So it does, it didn't matter that I never got good at it or wasn't super interested in all the nerdy intricacies. It's, it's um, coding is, a, there's a lot of creativity involved and I think people often forget that. I use the regular default notepad because I'm godly. Aaron says, I mean, yo, props to you, man. If you can pull that off, that's huge. You don't even need anything. David says, you can use a, you can code however you want unless you use a GUI. That's for fake programmers only. There you go. You should, (laughs) I love this. David says, you should code on paper. Agreed. If you want to be a real programmer. I, I definitely hate all that scrum, solid, agile Uncle Bob crap. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Uncle Bob. Like, that stuff was weird. Like, when I was even watching that video, just so long, and this guy just thinks, like, he knows everything, and it's just, oh, so frustrating. Like, I can't even imagine being his wife. Like, Jesus Christ, man, fuck. That is, uh, Uncle Bob is uh, an interesting cat. But yeah, I, I watched that video a bunch and then I'm just like, this is, this is crazy. I'm not sure what's happening here. Yeah, colorized theme. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not a real developer. Alejandro says, stop blocking the code. Hey, I got this freaking green screen just so I, oh, I wasn't, so I was blocking the code because there wasn't anything happening with the code earlier. <coughs> Uh, my chest elo is like 2,000 to 2,200, depending on the day, time, weather, um, my head being in the right place and me not being an idiot, things like that. Yep, so there is some programming news for you. Hopefully that was pretty good. Hmm. <coughs> Let's see what other things will catch our eyes. The new startup, no code, no problem. Interesting. So yeah, there's this whole no code movement going on. I am a big proponent of it. I support it. Um, Jeez, man. Pegging me for freaking emails. No, do not email me. All right. Continue reading. There we go. That was easy. 
you now you don't need to know any programming to launch a company. We've been approaching this moment for years. So basically what they're saying is there are tools like Webflow and Zapier that allow you to like automate a bunch of stuff, which yeah, there is there's parts of it that are pretty true because you can you can glue together a lot of clever logic using Zapier, which makes sense, right? Like so if you have an automation, somebody opts into your email and then it sends them this thing and then it sends them the next thing. And then you can do a lot of that with Zapier. Her company, Scribbly.io. Let's take a look at this. Let's look at this. Unbeatable content marketing services to grow your business. Book a strategy call. Tell us your goals and put your content on autopilot wow definitely looks really cool actually i would be interested in actually hitting them up so this looks super cool scribbly.io i mean yeah so it looks like it's a basic website uh airtable and online spreadsheet letter sort details about each job yep airtable is very very powerful tool if you use Airtable and you use Zapier and you use Webflow, you could do a lot of automation there. Yes, that is a, that, that that is true. Uh, she has twenty three clients and was doing twenty five thousand dollars in recurring business. So basically, at the time that this article was written, the owner of this website was doing about twenty three to twenty five thousand dollars a month, which is pretty good. Like especially if you're a new business owner, it's like really really good. And I imagine, you know, you have a couple of people who are paying you this much and then you're writing content for them and then they're just recurring customers. So that's pretty good. But here's the thing. Majority of this no-code stuff will get you really far, really, really far. But what I realized is even with the no-code stuff, you will still need to know some programming concepts to actually pull it off. Like even with Webflow and even with like CMSs, if you know some programming stuff, it really benefits you and you build things a lot faster. And why I like a lot of no-code stuff is if you have an idea or you want an MVP, you can do it really, really quick and just test it out. And if you like it, then you can spend the next few weeks coding it up because oftentimes when you're coding something up the performance of that thing is going to be really really sharp and you're going to have a lot of fine-tuned control over it if you don't care about that much fine-tuned control over every single little aspect then yeah i recommend if you're building a SaaS or you're building something just use tools to put it together but if you're at a job and you're at a company working and they have built something with react then you'll need to know react or if they have built something in web3 then you'll need to know web3 in order to continue building on top of their software and to continue growing their software and to continue making that software more robust over time By the way, on the topic of controversial opinions, how do you feel about open source software and the FSF, especially some of this extreme Richard Stallman stuff? I haven't followed any of the FSF stuff. I don't even know what that is or who Richard uh, Stallman is. But I know that Linus Torvalds is a huge proponent of open software. I am not against it. I think it's really cool. I was thinking about what open source softwares I know that are really prominent. And one of them that comes to my mind that I use pretty much every day is actually Lee Chess, Lee Chess Uh This thing. And this is open source. And this has like so much traffic. I like this more than chess.com. And most of the great players that I know actually play on here. And the experience is awesome like playing here the experience is just so good i'll try not to play the, the entire game here but 
like the the entire experience of lead chess is just in my opinion a lot better okay let's close out of it so it doesn't turn into a chess game and that's open source and uh, if i go to if i go back to lead chess you can see that it's open source where does it say again usually it says on the home page that it's free let me go as incognito yep so lead chess is a free libre no ads open source chess server right and if i go to where's their github they often allow you to they link you to their github twitch source code there we go source code and main back end and front end scala okay let's click that right boom there we go so all of the code is here for lee chess that is that is really phenomenal and you have 303 contributors helping make this a reality that is really really cool that you know that's something that would be really hard to pull off outside of something like this but you just have all these people coming in building it together and then they're really listening to the community and they're just making this phenomenal product and anybody that needs to add anything can just go ahead and code it up and actually help out and end result is such a brilliant and phenomenal product that Lee Chess is. And even their app is really, really amazing. So, yeah, I mean, hats off to them for being able to pull this off. And then the whole th interface just clean, no ads, nothing. So I, I like the open source movement. I think it's great. I also see the point of not open source, right? Because that's also something I was thinking about on my run yesterday, which is, who's going to pay for these people to be thinking about the thing 24 seven because they at some point need to do other things in their life, right? So open source. Yeah. You'll code it up, but then you need to actually put food on the table. So then you're going to go do your job. But with a job, if you're working at Microsoft or whatever, you're making hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year, you could just fully focus and not worry about anything else. And like literally do that for 10, 12 hours a day. That is a lot more fun. And then you can build something really, really great because you're obsessed about that thing and you're doing that thing every single day. So within six months, a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, you're going to build a better product. That's why I think VS Code is one of the best products out there. And it's a private, you know, it's, it's, it's by Microsoft. It's not an open source software. <clears throat> and... Um, you know, the best operating systems are not like, I wouldn't use Linux. I tried Linux. It sucks. I will never use it. It's awful. You can barely play a freaking normal video on there. You don't have any editing tools. You can barely even use the computer. Your email clients suck. Everything sucks. Like everything sucks. Zoom doesn't work properly. It's, it's trash. Um, I honestly don't know why people use it. They're like, oh, you could do sudo apt get. Who cares? There's homebrew. And there's all this other stuff that makes things easier. So why are you sitting here and using Linux? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like it's people just being extra nerdy. And they're just like, oh, I have a Linux setup. Ah, that's so cool. Like, good for you. But, you know, I don't know. It's just um i i think either pick windows or pick mac and they're like mature operating systems they have actual support you can call support <laughs> they'll help you and they have you know they're just very mature and then the whole native ecosystem sinks in and my i messages show up on my computer and they're synced with my phone and like my notifications work the right way and when i turn on focus mode it puts me on focus mode on my phone like the whole thing works right. You know, I personally think Mac is the best of both worlds because you have this delicious, gooey, yummy native world along and then high performance along with like all the command line benefits, you know. So as a developer, 
I uh, that's one of the reasons I ne I never go to Windows because like first of all text rendering resolution I need it to be 5K I'm so used to it now that I need my text to render in 5K and I can tell when the text isn't rendering in 5K like and it doesn't look as good and so I avo <laughs> I avoid um anything like that and so yeah until windows has 5k monitors that's definitely one thing uh the other thing is just getting the whole command line and everything set up is always a pain with windows and there's always more annoying steps to do than if you're doing it just in plain mac or linux there's always like extra stuff that you have to do or there'll always be a tutorial that'll be like Here's how to do this thing in five easy steps. Um, but if you have a Windows, here's this other like sadistic, complicated guide. Fuck off. Like click this and just like figure it out yourself. I'm not even going to write the guide for you. Just like click this and, and go somewhere else and figure it out. So I feel like, yeah, Windows stuff is... Uh, I don't know, just makes me kind of like vomit a little in my mouth. But, you know, you can still code on there. Like, you'll be fine. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, Mohammed says, um, I use Windows, but I have to admit that the Windows command line sucks and it's worse than Bash. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. Like, for coding and stuff, it's always a problem. To install stuff, it's kind of a problem. And I wish that they had a better command line system uh, going on there. Um, uh, yeah, Zaki says, hey, I disagree with you there, Kazi. Linux has its own place. I use Arch myself, and I'll admit that Windows and Mac OS is more friendly for the average user. But calling Linux trash flat out is... So here's what I'll say. If you're not... If your main purpose is like just developing, I think it's good you know I, I don't even know that vs code dude i don't know what they have like i'm not sure i don't even want to find out and like things are not even built for them properly but yeah like i think for coding it's probably good but then you have to have a zoom meeting and then like you have to sh share your screen and like zoom doesn't work properly and then sharing your screen like still shows all the people and it's kind of like annoying and it's like as a developer, unfortunately, you'll have more meetings than you'll get the right code. And so I feel like all of those things work properly. I wouldn't shit on Linux this hard if they just build proper support for everything, like for at least for like normal things like Slack, Zoom, like normal, simple things that the whole world uses. Unless they build that, I am just like, it's trash, and I want to run away. And I also respect your opinion that you don't think it's trash and you use it, and that's totally fine. <coughs> um, I'll, I can, I can, I could have gone full screen a while ago. <laughs> My bad, that, that rant... Who cares about pseudo? That rant went on longer than I had expected. My apologies. Where did my YouTube studio go? Ah, there it is. That rant went on forever, huh? Let's see. Did everybody go crazy in the comments? Was there a war? Yes, some someone asked, do you know the Bota sisters? Yes, I do know them, not personally, although I did run into the Bota sisters um, at the Las Vegas Nationals, uh, not, not Nationals, Las Vegas Chess Tournament. And I saw Botas there, and she was playing, she was playing pretty well. And then, I, and she, she, I think she was a younger sister the, or older sister. I don't know. Whichever one is like slightly weaker in chess, like so around 19, 2000. But she had a phenomenal tournament. And uh, yeah, so they're super cool. 
And then I ran into Eric Rosen there too. If you guys know him, he's a big YouTuber in chess. And I was just catching up with him because we we've been good friends from a long time. See, it varies from distro to distro, but here on Arch, I use Discord and Zoom, and it works totally fine. The installation as easy as blah, blah, blah. No dealing with other installers like other OS. Okay, that's pretty cool, Zach. I did not know that those things are working perfectly. That is super cool. I'm also a Linux user, but I use MacBook Air 2. They are both awesome. Let's see if I can pop that up. They are both awesome OSs. Linux has some free alternatives to paid Mac OS software, which are many times better than the paid one. Oh, yeah. So here's what I will say. I think that if you can have both, then that's really solid. That is like the best system because then you can have like a legendary coding environment with Linux. And then you have your Mac or you have your Windows and then your Gucci. So if you can have multiple, I mean, then yeah, then there's no problem because like, I was thinking about getting a Windows, but mostly for gaming stuff. So, yeah. My dad taught me, Lunia says, my dad taught me chess. I love it. Random question. How do I secure the Mern stack? Do you have a video? Secure as an add security to your Mern stack. I don't think we have videos on doing too much security, honestly. So we don't have something on it right now, I don't think. 456 votes. And 32% of you said this studio that we have here costs 20 grand. The right answer. I'm going to say the right answer right now. You guys ready? The right answer, the correct answer is, let's see if I can pop it up here. <coughs> the correct answer is, how, how can I turn this text white? Whites, please, give me whites. Ta da This studio costs roughly around thirty thousand dollars, probably a little bit more. Especially with with getting more stuff, so it's gonna be a little bit more. But yeah, around there. So you know, not the most expensive studio by any means, because it's like still relatively simple. But like if you take the Mac, the Mac is like eight grand. And then you take the monitor that I just got on the side that I'm going to put vertical is around three grand. So Dell Ultra Fine 32 inch something. If you combine all the lights, it's a couple of grand. Speakers, grand. Camera, a couple of grand. Roadcaster Pro, Stream Deck bunch of other accessory stuff green screen gonna get bookshelves in the back plants whiteboard photo tube lights and then some stuff that you guys can't even see yet honestly so maybe this, this wasn't totally fair but yeah if you add all of that up you get something like this maybe i should make this a thumbnail huh this would actually be a lot better as a thumbnail what do you guys think? Should this be the thumbnail? All right, if we're going to make this a thumbnail, then uh, let's see if we can add. Can we add drop shadow? I mean, it all. I guess it already has drop shadow, so that's good. All right, let's switch to... There we go. Thumbnail time. Let's move this a little bit over, actually, right there. I think it'd be better if I hit the green screen. The thumbnail would look better without 
the green screen. Let me hide the green screen. That's silly. All right, there we go. Green screen hidden. Now let's go here. Perfect, there we go. Now you guys see how in the back end we get our thumbnail set up. It's as easy as that. That's it. It's done. We got the thumbnail. Yo, what is up, Francisco? Michelle says, wow, that is a lot. <coughs> Essa Noor, what is going on, man? Nice to have you in here. What is up, Frankie? Nice to see you, brother. Strava clone. That would be fun to make. Will you build something? You're awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. Um, let me do another poll, actually. Let's end this poll. So 27% of you were roughly right. It's a good job. Let's do another poll. Content you want to see next. Okay. So what content do you actually want to see next? My money don't jiggle jiggle. It all right, you guys type it in chat and finish the song for me, okay? My money don't jiggle jiggle it. I'd love to see you for sure. It makes me want to, you know, write it in my... <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, so content you want to see next. So let's go Vue.js. That's something completely wild. Let's go Solidity. Let's go Python as an option. And let's go uh, more React slash Next.js. And let's hit it. And let's see what you guys want to see more of next. And we could do tutorials. We could do projects. So... Well, I'll, I'll kind of ask about that too afters. Hey, Lance is here. He goes, wiggle, wiggle. What is up, Lancey Coos? Where is Lance? Lancey Pants. There we go. Aaron goes, for sure. You know. Nice. <laughs> Everybody knows what's up. I apologize for the latency. It's kind of crazy. It falls there. Yo, you guys are legit. This gang is legit. All right. Going through your guys' comments. Yeah. I'm not sure how the quality is coming on on the stream. Looks good on my end, but I think it should be. I think it should be good. Um, all right. So the poll is getting some answers. Let's take a look at the poll. Ooh, heavy, heavy. You guys are asking for the React and Next.js stuff, but let's see if the... Tides are going to turn soon. Aaron says, I sing that song every day. That's funny. Yeah, that song is very addictive. And like you can you can also hear the auto tune in the back, right? Whenever you sing that song, you hear that auto tune in the back. Awesome. React native content. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. You guys want to see some good React native content. Yeah, there's definitely a big delay. Oh, crap. I didn't know it was a two-minute delay. Uh, I didn't want to do low latency because I wasn't sure what the late low latency does. I wasn't sure if it, like, 
lowers the quality of my video. And so like, I don't want to take the chance. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being on here. I think we're going to be wrapping it up. My money don't jiggle, jiggle. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to actually wrap. I'm going to wrap it up with a, like, wrapped ETH, okay? <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up, and then we'll catch up in the next one. But so far, I can see the poll. You guys are looking for more React content, and then I also see some Python requests coming in hot. So we might have Python coming up soon, too. Um, I will not be teaching you guys how to code I mainframes in COBOL. <laughs> Zaki just made me do a little, uh, little gag reflex action. Some acid reflux, just who going like this. All right. I thank you guys for being on here. I appreciate the. Uh, interactiveness, Magesh, Zaki, Aaron, One UK, Front Forum Focus, everybody, uh, Akib, Akib, Lunia. I love all of you guys for being here. Thank you so much. I'm sorry if I didn't get to say your name, but know that I saw your comments most likely, and I appreciate the engagement. So thank you guys for being here. I love your beautiful face. If you haven't already, smash that like button. This video goes out to more and more people right and um that's it i love your beautiful face if you enjoyed this let me know in the comments below and we'll definitely make this happen more uh more times i do not code on ruby on rails mauricio if you guys enjoyed this we'll make this happen more often and with that said i love your beautiful face as always i'll see you finish the sentence for me i'll see you I bet you could hear it already in your head, right? Good.